Keith Allen Fetter was a 41-year-old from Martinsville, Virginia. He was the father of three and had Ozzy tattooed on his knuckles. On May 24, 2008, Keith was over at his wife's house. They were separated at the time. Keith became agitated and left with the people who brought him there. About 600 feet down the road, Keith jumped out of the car and ran off. He was never seen again. I'm Ed Denzel, and this is Unfound. predict the future. No matter how rich or powerful or successful or good or bad we are, we don't know for sure what will happen tomorrow. We don't know for sure what will happen an hour from now or even a minute. We don't know what's going to happen next. Stalin didn't foresee the Nazis attacking the Soviet Union. Steeler fans didn't see the immaculate reception coming. And who could have predicted the success of Nickelback? In fact, there's no greater dichotomy in life than a minute ago and a minute from now. The former seems so close, and the latter seems so far, despite them being both scientifically the same distance away. And in disappearances, we surely know that many of them couldn't have been predicted, because if they could have been, they wouldn't have happened. But there is no pre-crime unit, as existed in the film The Minority Report. And more generally, none of us know what twists and turns our lives will take. We don't know what life will hand us. I bring this up because in the case of Keith Fetter, he was over at his wife's house. Then after going off the deep end over, of all things, a dog, he left with the people who had brought him there. But no more than 600 feet from the house, at the intersection with another road, Keith jumped out of the car and disappeared. An action no one could have predicted and we're left to wonder what happened around the next corner. And now a summary of the case. This is brought to you by my friend Megan Good's website, charlieproject.org. Keith Fetter was kind of a guy's guy. He loved the outdoors, rock and roll, nature, snow skiing, although he wasn't much into sports. He met the love of his life in 1992 after a failed first marriage. Keith and his new wife got married in 1994. They had two children. He was working as a truck driver and she worked as well. Everything was good. Then the problems started. Erratic behavior and strangers coming over to the house to see Keith. Due to this, Keith moved out of his home in early 2008 and moved in with his friend Dennis, although Keith continued to be a good father. This is where Keith was living when he disappeared. So on May 24, 2008, Keith showed up at his wife's house with Dennis, another couple, and their daughter. They were there because the couple were interested in buying Keith's wife's dog. Keith went around the house with the father of the girl. It's unclear what happened, but within moments, Keith came back to the front yard, ranting and raving, not making any sense. Everyone tried to calm him down, but to no avail. Dennis and the others brought Keith back to the car, and they left. They pulled out and drove down to the stop sign about 600 feet away. At this point, Keith's wife watched as he jumped out of the car and ran across the street. Fearing Keith was headed back to her house, Keith's wife went back to call 911. However, when she came back outside, Keith and the car were gone. Fifteen minutes later, Dennis and the others showed up, looking for Keith. He had not returned to their car. Keith was never seen again. An extensive search over the next week found nothing. Although this disappearance seems like a case of a man with some kind of mental breakdown running off and not returning, there are questions that are still unanswered. Number one, why do police claim Dennis never tried to file a missing persons report, even though Dennis says he did? Number two, the couple and their daughter never once showed interest in the dog again. So what was the true reason for them being over at the house that day? And number three, why did searches with ATVs, horses, and helicopters 
find no sign of Kevin, even though the woods in the area are not extensive. Keith's family is open to many possibilities regarding this case. The guest for this episode is Keith's wife, Jennifer Fetter. Unfound News Finally, really, truly, Volume 5 of Season 1 of the Unfound Book Series is out. Thanks to all of you who had so much patience, and I really need to thank the transcribers who put in all the hard work. This book contains the disappearances of Shannon Turner, Brandy Wells, Clashindra Hall, Ronnie Russell, Esther Westenbarger, Shane Fell, and Ashley Eifert. It's now available on Amazon. Next, the update episode from last week went over extremely well. Frankly, I think I underestimated how much you love to hear the progress that's been made on the case's unfound covers. So I've decided to produce update episodes more frequently. I'm thinking about every four months. So I think you can expect another one around late August. And finally, Unfound made a list of the most investigative podcasts in existence. Something like that. I think by this time you know I don't care about rankings and awards. But I thank all of you who noticed the accolades and let others know that they should be listening to this program. Thank you. Where you can find Unfound. Unfound supports accounts on Podomatic, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Contribute to Unfound at patreon.com forward slash unfound podcast. This week, I need to thank Carla and Crystal. You can also contribute at PayPal, unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. That is also the email address. Merchandise, the books in amazon.com in both ebook and print form. Don't forget the reviews. Shirts at shopify.com. Cards at makeplayingcards.com. And please mention Unfound at all true crime websites and forums. Thank you. I'm so happy to have on this episode of Unfound the wife of Keith Fetter, Jennifer Fetter. Jennifer, welcome to Unfound. Thank you. Let's start here. You and Keith were a couple. You were married. But um, let's go back to maybe um, in the past. How did you and Keith meet? Oh, um, I think it was in 1992. Wow. Okay. Um, did you go to school together a, or what? No. A mutual friend decided that she didn't like the guy I was dating, so she wanted me to meet her friend. Huh. And it was almost a it was an instant connection. Wow. Okay. Uh, so you got set up. A friend of yours set you up with him right <laughs> wow how if i may ask how old were you two at the time i think i was 25 oh, okay okay 1992 you were 25 and uh he's around your age and he's about four and a half years older okay and what'd you think of him when you first met him do you remember like your first date, or what do you remember about those early days? Um, of course, before you were married, you were just dating. What do you remember the things that really struck you about him, that really attracted you, uh, you to him? He had the most awesome personality and these gorgeous blue, ocean blue eyes. Huh. Okay. That was that was the thing, huh? And he was uh, a, a bigger guy, tall guy. Yeah, he's a little taller than me. Okay. I'm short, so. Okay. Okay. And what was he into when you first met him, and he introduced you to you know what he's doing in his life? What was his interests like? Hobbies, sports, anything like that? Um, he wasn't really much into sports. Um, he was. He loved to snow ski and water ski. Uh, we would take trips to Winchester, where his family mm -hmm. also lives. And mm -hmm. he, he liked being outside. All right, like, so he'd he like to be outside, more of a nature there. guy, like a nature guy. And he was sort of. <laughs> okay, well, did, did he get into, I mean, this is Virginia, so there's hunting and fishing, anything like that? No, none of that. None of that. <laughs> none of that. Okay, yeah. and okay, and um, what was he doing at the time? What was where was he working? What were you doing? 
I was actually in college at the time, and he was working, and I would go over for lunch, bring him lunch, and, uh, you know, we did that for a while. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, does he have any um, brothers and sisters? I guess at some point you were introduced to his family. Does he have brothers and sisters? And... No, he is a he was an only child. Wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so he's working, you're going to school, and you met in 1992. Uh, you did a lot of things together, and when did you end up uh, having kids? When did you um, end up uh, getting married? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that next. Well, he, uh, he was actually married. Oh, he was? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, somehow separated. we skipped over that. Okay, so he was married when you met him, huh? Or was... Was that yes. was they, that marriage they got like married early? Okay. Yeah, he was like eighteen when they got married, and it was short lived. And you know. Okay. But uh, we had talked about you know getting married, uh, having a family, and we were also in the process. At this point, I was no longer in school, but I was working. Uh huh. We were in the process of getting a one to build a house. Okay. And things just kind of <laughs> moved a little faster than we planned. Um, mm-hmm. We were going to, you know, of course, get married, move in a house, then have kids. But mm-hmm. it kind of all went backwards. I got pregnant. <laughs> okay. Well, that happens. That happens. Yeah, you don't have to apologize. Happens. You don't have to soft pedal that, Jennifer. That happens. There's no, that's no big deal. So you ended up having kids yeah. first. Yeah, I mean, it was planned. We were planning it anyway. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, okay, I, we had. They were in the process of building the house, and we were supposed to move in August first, nineteen ninety four. That's a great date. That's my birthday. If you want to know. Oh really? August first. Yeah, that's a great day. That's a great choice for a day to move in. Well, at the same time, they were also building two other houses beside mine. Well. Things got messed up, mixed up, back, you know, schedules was backed up. So it ended up being October 1st is when we moved in. Okay. So it was kind of two months behind. Mm-hmm. And my, our first child was born on October 31st, 1994. Halloween. I love that. Yes. Okay. His birthday is the 28th of October, and we were actually going to try and schedule it because I was over and we were going to try and mm. schedule it to have it on his birthday but there mm. was some mix up at the hospital so they had to back me up till the 31st <laughs> okay and so that was the first of your kids but you had some other kids eventually um, when did you end up getting married what was the, what was your wedding date actually we got married on October, August 23rd 1994. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so you had a child in October of 1994. And then I, I know you have a couple other children. When were they born? Uh, we had our daughter October 24th, 1996. All right, another October birth. Okay. Uh, yeah. Three Scorpions. Okay. All right. My mother's birthday was October 25th. So I'm familiar oh. with Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Okay. <laughs> so you're married. You have these children. Uh, are you working? Is his, he working? What, what uh, is he doing for work? What was his trade? Um, he did a lot of different things, but he eventually got into truck driving. Okay. Like long distance, like up and down the East Coast yeah. of the United States or more local? Nah, up and down, yeah. He would go to New York, uh, wow. Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, West Virginia. Okay. How did he seem to like that? He liked it. Yeah. He really did. He got to, you know, travel. And, mm-hmm. you know, but it kept him away married. from home a, little, a lot, quite a bit, though. I mean, I have, I, yeah. both of my brothers yeah. were truck drivers at times, so I know about that. So, both of mine but, older brothers, so I know, yeah. With all married couples, you know, you have your little issues. And when he would go out, that would be kind of like a, okay we can breathe and when you come back it's going to be great (laughs) Mm -hmm. okay 
And this kind of would have been uh, maybe mid '90s, late '90s of when this was going on. That um, you know, cell phones were kind of coming in. I, did he have a cell phone back then? Was he able to call like on the road, or did he have to pull over to do that? Um, he had to pull over, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. How many kids did you and Keith end up having? Okay. Um, we had two together, mm -hmm. and my oldest child was born in January '89. Okay. He adopted her. Oh, well, that was kind of nice of him. Okay. And did he have any kids from his previous marriage? No. Okay. So in all, you had three and he adopted, like you said, your uh, child from a previous marriage. So you had three. Yes. Three kids. Okay. And so 89, uh, that child would be coming 30 this year at some point. Yeah. January. He's already oh, 30. <laughs> already 30. Okay. Time flies, right, Jennifer? Time flies. Yes, it does. With kids oh. of our own. So. Okay. So you have uh, 1989, 1994, 1996 for the kids. You're married. Um, how are things going? How are things going into the late 90s with your marriage and into the 2000s? How how was Keith doing? Mm, well, all right, I'm not exactly sure about the time frame. Mm, okay, that's fine. But, you know, things were going fine, and we would have our, you know, up and downs like every couple. He spent mm -hmm. a lot of time with the kids. That was really important to him. And mm -hmm. every now and then, it would be like he would just completely change. Hmm. And, you know, for a long time, I didn't really realize what was going on. Okay. Um, Did he have some really, sort of uh, bipolar issue or mental issue, or was there something else, do you think? Um, well... I'm not exactly sure what. I know he was depressed, and I'm not mm. sure if he was actually bipolar or not, but he did have some addictions. Okay. That, I mean, I knew when we first got together that they were an issue, but when we first, you know, when we got together and we talked about getting married and having kids, um, he stopped everything. He mm. wasn't even drinking. Okay. So, um, right. after the kids came, you know, time goes up and down. Um, but then he's out on the road, you know, by himself a lot of the time. And, yeah, you know, um, and that, that probably might have been tough on him. And, you know, like I said, my brothers were truck drivers and they've told me many stories about sometimes truck drivers get into, you know, staying awake, they take, start taking speed and, and things like that. Do you think that was part of it or was it something else? It's possible. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, I'm not really sure exactly when it started mm -hmm. or what it started with, but mm -hmm. you know, one addiction led to another. Um, <clears throat> and when he was home, he was, was starting to drink again. Mm -hmm. That was a sign that things were changing a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Okay. Um, okay. What was, uh, what was maybe, I, I don't necessarily call it the last job, because you two continued to have a relationship after you uh, separated and everything, but um, what was the moment when you just decided that maybe it was best that he not live with you and the kids anymore? What what brought you to that decision? How did he look, go along with that? And when was that? Um, let's see. I'm, I'm sorry. I've got to think. Um, go ahead. This was like 2007. Okay. Um, so like a year before year. he went missing. Yeah. Middle of the year, things started getting really bad. Uh, a lot of arguments. Um, he would take off, and he mm. would call me and say, "Hey, I'm over here, or I'm up at the lake." You know, he always let me know where he was. Mm -hmm. But um, but there were some things maybe also, going be going on behind the scenes that he didn't want to show you or tell you about. Yes, okay. definitely. Um, okay. I know, you know, some people had, you know, one or two people had come by the house um, wanting to see my husband. And uh, 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know, one actually said he owed him money. Hmm. So, you know, I knew there was a whole lot there that I wasn't seeing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. things just got really, you know, I had three kids. Um, I'm depressed. A little bit of bipolar. Okay. So, you know, it, it's weighing on me, too, and I just, I couldn't take it anymore. People were coming yeah. to the house, and I told him, I said, look, I'm going to go admit myself into the hospital, and when I get out, we're going to talk about this because there's got to be a, a change. Mm-hmm. And I actually went into, it's called One North at the hospital. And I had myself voluntarily admitted to the hospital. And the very same night, um, I had told him that I was going, but I had not told my kids. And I had tried for hours to get in touch with my kids. And I even started calling neighbors and, you know, couldn't get in touch with anybody. Long story short, um, he had actually apparently OD'd in our front yard. Oh, my. And my 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 son and his friend down the road, they were trying to pull him into the house, and they had already called their sister and her boyfriend over, which were ENT, and he ended up in the hospital. Um, and, you know, it was like, um, I don't know, 11.30 when I found out all this. Wow. When do you think, I, I wouldn't ne- never expect you to remember the exact date, but what do, month, if this was in 2007, do you think? Do you remember what month? This was actually in 2008. 2008, okay. Yes. This so early 2000, 2008. okay. Um, March. March 2008. March 2008. Right, thank you. Yes. Okay. So, um, with all that being said, I finally, they finally allowed my daughter's boyfriend to come in and speak with me and let me know what exactly was going on. Mm-hmm. And that they could not admit him to the Mar- Marksville Hospital because I was there. <laughs> hmm. And he actually just got up and walked off out of the hospital. Wow. And, you know, they would not let me out. I had to, you know, do my 72 hours. And when I come home, I said, you've got to go. Yeah. I can't can have you, this around my kids. If you can say just for a moment, Jennifer, what did he overdose on, if you can say? Um, not 100%, but I'm thinking it was a fentanyl patch. Oh, my. Okay. That stuff is powerful. Wow. I think that's the stuff that you open up and eat, whatever that was. Oh, my. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah all it right. was pretty bad. Okay, and, and so he he went out. Did he put up any, uh, I'm not saying a physical fight. This is metaphorically. Did he put up a fight with that, or did he understand? How how did he go along with that? He, com- he completely understood. Oh, that was good. You know, I told him, I said, we've done bad. We've done this and that. Um, but when I needed you the most to be here for our children, you do this, you yeah. overdose. Right. And, you know, I'm like, I can't have that. Of course not. I mean, I was depending on him to take care of our children while I got myself better. Mm-hmm. And along with that, and, you know, his change in attitude and behavior. And by this point, he was actually in and out of truck driving jobs. Yeah. He would go somewhere and, and you know, I don't know, I'm... I know two places he failed a drug test. Yeah, you got to pass drug tests for to drive, you know, drive for any reputable company for sure. And they don't want uh, addicts out in the roads, that's for sure. So, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot there that I don't know the whole story, and I probably mm. never will. Um, okay. So I told him, you know, first of the month, year, March, April, that was tax time. I uh, told him that we had it set up that it would come directly into my account and that mm-hmm. I would, you know, I would pay first a month deposit on a place, buy him whatever he needed, fill up his refrigerator, but I was not giving him cash. 
and he understood he was fine with that. Um, he actually got an apartment. Um, I paid the deposit, first month's rent, bought um, mm. fishware, food, everything he needed. All right, so you took care of him. I did. And where did um, he? And well, you kicked him out. He said he went along with it. Where did he go? Um, not too far. <laughs> he okay. was about twenty minutes away. Um, living with who? By himself? With friends? Who was he living with? Himself. I'm At this point, he was by himself. Yes. Okay. All right. And how how did that arrangement go? This is, like you say, March into early April two thousand eight. Maybe, you know, less than two months before he disappeared. Um, he's living by himself. You kind of stocked his refrigerator for him, which has to be one of the nicest things that a woman has ever done for a guy that kicked out of his house. And well, you um, know, how? But I, you two I, had a history, you know, you know. When you get married, it's for in sickness and health. Right. And I know that he was sick, but yeah, I had to put my kids first, and I could not have complete strangers come into my house. No, it's dangerous. I agree. It is very dangerous. <laughs> All right. And um, he stayed well, a month exactly. You know, ran out the the rent that I had paid. Um, I did not. Mm-hmm. He wasn't. Of course, he like you said, he wasn't working. Yeah, he was not working. Okay. So when his rent time was up, he moved into a with a friend he is. And what was his friend's name? Is this Dennis? Dennis Beaver, yes. Okay, and we're going to talk about him in a bit. All right, so he's living by himself for the month, but he can't make the rent for the next month, so he has to move out. This is like April of 2008. Um, did you see him like uh, that? maybe that April? Were you seeing him? Were the kids seeing him that month? I mean, were you going over? Was he allowed to come um, over? What were you doing? He was allowed over at any time. <sighs> Mm-hmm. Um, I actually had a friend move in. It was a male friend, but um, he was allowed over any time. The kids, any time the kids wanted to see him, I had no problem with that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it was in sickness and health. It was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. Yeah. Um, I was praying that he would wake up. <laughs> Right. Wake up. Of course. Get, get clean. Come home and say, "Hey, look, we're gonna work this out." Okay. And that never happened. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you see him that month. He's not able to pay his rent. So he moves in with Dennis. How well did you know Dennis? Uh, were you surprised when Keith uh, moved in with uh, Dennis? And I know other people were living there as well. We'll get into that maybe a little later. But uh, did that surprise you? How did you think that was going to go? Um. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. Um, actually, he's been us for a couple of years. Him and his wife actually lived two houses up from us. Mm. And his son is actually one that was helping my son, trying to revive him or bring him back into the house. Oh, the okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, she had actually, they said we planned it. <laughs> she had actually kicked her husband out. That's why he was out by himself. Huh. So, yeah, so Dennis, that's how Dennis and Dennis and Keith ended up living together. Yes. All right. So Dennis got in some trouble as well. Yeah. yeah it's kind of, I mean, we didn't plan it, but we kind of had the exact same thing going on at the exact same time. Okay. All right. Well, we're not going to get into Dennis's yeah. relationship. Okay. So he goes and lives with Dennis. Is there are there other people living with Dennis or not? No, it's okay. just him and Dennis. Okay, so they're they're living together. Um, and how did you think that was going to go? You of course, like you said, knew Dennis very well, but did you think this was maybe just a short term thing or or what? Um, I was hoping it was a very short term thing. <laughs> okay. All right, so we have Dennis, and what's Dennis's last name, if you can say? Uh, Beavers. Beavers, like B-E-A, like the animal, B-E-A-V-E-R-S? Exactly. Okay, Dennis Beavers, okay. So they move in together, and do you think that Keith liked it there? I mean, you were still seeing him. Uh, How did he like it, living with Dennis? 
well, he made out like everything was fine. They were having a great time, getting along. Um, mm-hmm. um, that's kind of when we started really not talking that much. Um, the huh. kids had went up there one time, and they actually were there at the same time that Mr. Beaver's kids were there. So it was mm-hmm. Keith. Dennis, and then four to five kids. <laughs> okay. My three and her two. So, um, I don't know. Sometime, they were supposed to stay the whole weekend, and it was a uh, Saturday evening that she actually, Dennis's wife actually called me to come pick up my children. That Keith was meeting her in a parking lot that something had happened, and Anyway, um, well, did the kids get into a fight or or what? They did with Dennis. His kids got into it with with Dennis. Oh, yeah, they didn't. They were there. They wanted to play with each other. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to spend time with Daddy. Uh And then that caused a big fight. Everybody started arguing, and Keith called her. He didn't call me, but he called her to come get the kids. And called who? who, Came who? Came who to get? Called who to get the kids? I'm sorry, he called uh, Dennis's wife to come get oh. her kids. Okay. And I showed up, and when I got there, I told my kids they were coming home with me. Whatever mm-hmm. the issue was, if it was bad enough for Keith to take the, his other, the other kids away, then mine mm-hmm. shouldn't be going back up there either. Okay. So he kind of got mad about that, and we really, every time after that, he, the kids didn't want to go. They didn't want to see him. Um, he had come to the house one time. And in that May of 2008? May of 2008. Well, like I said, all this is fast forwarding. It's mm. all between March right. and the end of May. It's just all fast forwarding. Okay. It's all, you know. Um, all smashed together. It means it's almost yeah. 11 years ago. It's like 11 years ago now. So I understand some of the details. Yes. But these are the things that were going on in the time before he disappeared. These are some noteworthy yeah. things. Okay. But my understanding is it's at some point with, did other people move in over there with Dennis? And, uh, no, no it was just the two of them. Okay. Yeah, it was just the two of them. They okay. had friends, but they did not move in with them. Okay. All right. Well, let's move up to that day of May 24th, 2008, which is at least on paper, the accepted day. The Keith disappeared. First, we have to talk about there was something you had some sort of party or get together at your house. What was this occasion? How long was it planned? What what was going on there? Actually, I was at a child's birthday party somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And oh. Keith was calling me repeatedly. He wanted to come, and he he had some friends that wanted to come and take our family dog. Hmm. And after repeated phone calls, and I didn't want to make a big scene at the kid's birthday party I was at, so I left and came home to try and deal with this situation. The kids, our, my kids did not want the dog to go, the family dog, and he, you know, well, I paid for him. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you want to take him, then you come take him. And he showed up with... um Dennis was with them, a little girl, and a couple was with them. They were all in the same vehicle. Hmm. Okay, who was the couple? So it's Dennis Beavers, and who is the couple? Um, Walter and Lisa Shelton. Okay. So Walter, is that his wife then? Um, Walter just... and Lisa. Lisa is Walter's wife. Okay, so the couple, all right, married couple, Dennis and Keith show up in a car to pick this dog up. Did you uh, could ever understand why he wanted to get the dog so bad? What was it, what was up with that? Um, their daughter was also with them. Okay. Um, I don't know. He just said that it was a nice couple that wanted a pet for their daughter. Okay. So they wanted to take your dog. So to do that, they wanted to take your dog away. Yeah, I mean, I have my suspicions. It's probably more than that, but um, uh, he was a full-blooded back of hound. 
Okay, so maybe but they we were thinking breed about breeding them. or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So they. So you're with this birthday party. You go back to your house so they can get this dog. How long um, was ever were they there? What what was going on? Um. Okay. Now this is when it really I have no clue at the time. I know I left the party about four thirty. I think. Mm-hmm. So they show up. He see everybody seems fine and happy and in good mood. You know, I go out and I'm, the woman does not get out of the car. Lisa Sheldon does not get out of the car, and the daughter doesn't no. get out of the car. Okay. No. And you know, I walk over, and you know, he, the dog was kind of older, and I wasn't sure how he was going to be with a, a younger child. Yeah. So I went over in there, I was kind of talking, trying to talk to her and, you know, making sure, you know, hey, um, are you going to keep them outside? Do you want to get your daughter out and see if they get along first, you know? <laughs> um, she was very uncomfortable. She didn't want to get out. And she wouldn't let her daughter get out. And she had been drinking. I could smell it. Hmm. Um, while I'm talking to her, my kids are outside running around. Being kids, um, my male friend was there. He was on the swing, and at the same time, Dennis, no, sorry, Dennis is up front with me. Okay. But we're all talking. Keith and Walter Shelton walked to the backyard to look at the dog, and the next thing I know, Keith comes up. I mean, you can hear him screaming. Huh. And no idea what is going on. Um, he just starts going off. And I mean, he, wow. we weren't fighting because I have no idea what he was yelling about. Mm -hmm. But he was just screaming, cussing, threatening. Um, at one point, I had to get between him and my friend. Which my friend was sitting on a swing, and he was just going to go after him. And I got between them, and I... The, I'll never forget the look he had in his eyes. Keith, I mean, they were just, Keith, yes, in his Keith. eyes. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Um, That's all right. It was like they were just almost black. That wow. gorgeous ocean blue was gone. There was, it, there was no blue there. <laughs> okay. And I knew then uh, my stomach just dropped. I knew something bad was going to happen. I didn't know what. <laughs> mm. So was uh, so Walter is in the back with Keith. They you hear, you hear that yelling. Keith comes back around the house. Does Walter ever say anything to yeah. you? Like, man, I don't know what happened here. He just started going off. Was it an argument about the dog? Was it something well, else? Yeah, what, Walter what? did come up, and we're okay. like, "What is going on?" And he's like, "He tripped over the dog, and got when he got up, he just started screaming. So he probably got irritated." <laughs> okay. And that's all Walter said is, you know, he was bending over at the dog and he kind of fell over him or something and I guess that's what started it. Okay. So I guess he just wanted to take all his frustrations out and screaming and yelling and hollering and like I said, nobody was arguing. Mm, okay. <laughs> we were just so trying to calm down. What is wrong with you? Calm down, you know? Mm -hmm. um, they were getting trying to get Keith into the vehicle to leave. And somebody made the, one of them made a comment about getting a vehicle before she calls the law. Well, that really set him off too. <laughs> I bet. This is my house, and he starts beating on the car, saying this is my car. And they finally did. Um, Walter and Dennis both kind of helped him into the back seat, and you know, stood there for a little while. And they had all been drinking. I could smell it on all of them. Okay, so you think so you think that Keith was also drinking before they came over there that day? Yes, I can smell oh, it. Okay, all right. Um, so that they kind of shepherd him back into the car. I'm sure your kids are all freaked out because at the time, yeah, um, if I'm doing my calculations, one would be like 19, one would be 14, the other one would be 12. I'm sure yeah. you know, a little freak out going there. Yeah. Now, the 19-year-old, I yelled at her and told her to take the 12-year-old, her sister, down next door. 
you know, mm-hmm. just get her in the house, take her next door. Okay. Um, so it's me and my son standing outside, and they go to the stop sign. They pull out the driveway, and they go to the stop sign. And they stop, you know, like you're supposed to. Um, we can still hear them yelling and screaming mm-hmm. and cussing. Really can't see who's saying what. Mm-hmm. But um, I saw him get out of the back seat. All right, let's just let's not use pronouns. You saw Keith get out of the back seat of the car down at the yes. down at the corner of your road. Okay, yes. great. All right, what do he you see next? Side, and he started walking to the right, which would be down the road. Okay. Um, okay, when he got out, I'm like, okay, he's coming back. I'm just going to call him off. Sure. When I got, I went in, I got my cordless phone, I came out, and when I started down 911, the car was gone. I didn't hear any screaming, the car was gone, so I was like, okay, I'm going to call him off. What did you, if I may, if I may ask you right at that point, so uh, just so the listeners can understand that you, they shepherd him into the car and you think things, well, we'll just, hopefully he'll calm down before they get home. You see them go down to the stop sign and I've kind of looked at it on a map and we're going to give out maybe some information here about this, ex- these locations, but I, I estimated it'd be about 600 feet, like two football fields down to the stop sign from your house. You're still out in the front yard watching the car. It stops there. Keith jumps out. You think that he's coming back to the house, a perfectly logical thing to think, and you might be a little nervous about that. So you go back inside, so you lose sight of the car. When you come back out, though, Keith and the car are gone. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. So please continue. He's Mm -hmm. gone. (laughs) Yeah, you're thinking, oh, Um, maybe he'll be sober tomorrow and everything will blow over. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, I was really so. What'd you do? Up, so, so what'd you um, do next? You went up there, and with the phone, you ended up calling the police. No, oh, you didn't. Okay, but, you know, the car was gone, so I put the phone back. I come outside, and I was just kind of, you know, walking around the yard trying to catch my breath, calm mm-hmm. down a little bit, calm the kids down. Mm-hmm. And I honestly, I had no idea what the time frame was. It wasn't long. Okay. Um, they the car pulls back up, and I'm like, "Oh gosh, Uh-oh. deal with this again." <laughs> right, you're thinking um, Keith's in the car. Yeah. Okay. And they said that um, Walter and Dennis were telling me that he got out of the car, they were arguing, and he ran across the street into the woods. Okay. And that he would not come out. And if he came back to the house, would I call them to come get him instead of calling them all? Okay. All and right. So what you're what you're taking for granted, just to explain this uh, for the listeners. So you see Keith jump out of the car. Of course, he doesn't come back in the direction of the house. Instead, he goes across the street, which people need to, more north across the street. And there's a little patch of woods there. That's where they say he went in. Yeah. In the okay. small patch, yeah. Okay. Did, did, do you think they tried to look for him? Did they go in there trying to look for him or what they do? Um, Any idea? Well, Dennis said that he, you know, stepped a couple of feet in, and it was too much, so he couldn't, which he was with a walking with a cane. So oh, he didn't go in any further, and it was starting to get a little dark by this point. Um, I mean, you can still see, but it's getting there. Okay. And Walter never said whether he tried to go in or not. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and, I mean, that's actually all I know for a fact. Okay, so let, let me just ask you a couple questions. Um, so they say he went in. Maybe they look for him. Let's say it's 15 minutes. They come back to the house. Maybe Do you think that they were thinking that maybe Keith came back to your house? Do you think that was on their mind? Yeah. Okay, okay. But, of course, he didn't. Um, did they seem shaken up by it? Do you think they seemed calm? Did they seem, like, bewildered? How would you explain their demeanor when they came back to the house? Um, honestly, I cannot remember. I okay. know that I was just so, at this point, <laughs> that they pulled back up, I am terrified. Yeah. That he, you know, I'm thinking he's in the car, it's going to be physical this time. Right. And, you know, there's like, oh, well, he ran into the woods. And I'm like, I was just kind of thrown back. 
Right. Because then I'm like, okay, you ran into woods. Sometime he's going to come out and he's going to come here. I mean, mm-hmm. I no, don't know what to expect. And perfectly I really... rational. I, I, you know, I think that if I was in your position, I'd be a little worried too. I think everybody in the listen, listening now would be a little worried, of course. So, I, I mean, I would be worried uh, a little bit too. You know, being that he just, how he was behaving just 20 minutes before that or half hour before that, of course. So they came back and just said, well, look out for him. And so what did you do? They left, I guess? Yeah, they left. Um, they huh. went back to the stop sign and took a right. And that was the last time that I had seen Walter and Lisa. That was the last time I ever saw them. Okay. And what did you do the rest of that evening? Of course, it was getting dark. Uh, were you like peeking out the windows to make sure Keith wasn't creeping up on the back porch or something? I'm serious. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. you know, you had to be a little well, apprehensive. Actually, What'd you do? Um, I had my neighbor keep my youngest daughter, the 12 year old. I made her stay there. She had two kids there. So she was playing with them. So she was fine. She was safe. She won't even thinking about it at this point. Um, my daughter was there. She was, her bedroom was in basement. And, you know, she just did her thing, watched TV, went to sleep. Um, I was pins and needles all night long. Yeah. I kept waiting. I kept waiting for something. <laughs> right, right. Um, hoping for nothing but prepared. Mm. Um, kept my phone close. Um, I did finally go to sleep. I don't know what time it was. Um, my son, he was probably still up watching TV when I fell asleep. Mm-hmm. And then, had you ever seen I mean looking back at that had I realized you were married to him you were still married to him at the time he disappeared but you, you two had been through a lot did you ever see him like that that day that he disappeared like the rage yeah. the anger you know all you know whatever you would call it had you ever seen him act like that before no huh yeah no, I mean we have had you know he had episodes but nothing Nothing at all that bad. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you make it through the night. Of course, Keith does not come back to your house. Uh, Dennis and Walter and Lisa and their daughter, they go on their way. The next day, um, the sun rises. What happens? Well, sometime in the morning, Dennis calls me and asks me if he ever came to the house. And then I replied, No. And I asked him if he had seen him or heard from him, and he said no. That he had actually tried to call and report him missing. Hmm. I thought that was a little strange. Okay, but... like 12, 14, 16 hours after he disappeared, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he says that uh, they would not allow him to make a filing this imprisonment report because he was not family. Only a family member could. And he asked if I would call and then report him missing. Well, I said, okay, I can do that. And I'm just thinking this whole thing sounds weird. Um, so when I call, I kind of briefly explain what had gone, gone on. And when reporting missing, and that uh, they were going to send somebody out to talk to me. Okay. Asked him if anybody else had tried to call and report him missing. And they said, well, not as far as we know. Um, and then I asked him, I said, well, can, with calls, can anybody report somebody missing? And they said, well, yeah. So I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. So, you know, now I'm like, okay, really not sounding right. Right? Um, Sometime that afternoon, it wasn't right away, um, the police show up and they take my statement. Um, okay. And you described what you saw, thing. you described what you saw, and you told them that they needed to maybe talk to Dennis too? Yes. I'm thinking this was, okay, this was Sunday afternoon that they came out and took my report. Um... And this is all around, um, you know, about Labor Day time, and it's on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, so Monday, Monday morning, 
still have not heard from Keith. Uh, I get uh, my friend and Mr. Beavers, Dennis, and his wife. They all, the four of us, go out into the woods, and you know, I told Dennis, I said, "Okay, show me where he went in at." And um, his wife and my friend went like on the other side of the the open field and went into the woods, and they were going to go kind of like hidden down to where the creek is down there. And I went in with Dennis. And he took her, you know, he walked a little bit into it. Where we went in, it was not that thick. And you could actually, you know, you could look around and you could see the house next door. And, mm-hmm. um, okay, you couldn't see anything. So, obviously, if he came in here, he went down this way. So, we're still, you know, walking around. I'm getting cut up by briars. <laughs> and he gets tired. So, Dennis turns around and goes back to the field out of the woods. All right. Did you is he the one that has to use a cane or something? Yes. Okay. So I can understand. I mean, he's going through the woods in a cane. That has to be tough. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that leaves me and my friend and his wife out in the woods, and we all at one point, you know, we could we were hollering at each other mm-hmm. to make sure we could still. <laughs> Insane area. Yeah, you didn't want to get lost. Other. You didn't want to get lost yourselves. <laughs> right. Okay. Which I knew I wouldn't. I could go either way and, you know, either come out in the field or go to the the house. But within two, they were down in the thicker part. So I hollered at them, and I'm, you know, kind of following their voice to come down the hill to where they're at. And we still, you know, never come up on anything. Um, no. I come up with uh, his wife, and me and her follow this other trail back out to the field. Comes out a different area of the field, and then my friend comes out this, you know, just random area. And we still, I mean, we found nothing. And we were looking for, um, I don't know, we don't know if he had any um, money, weapons, right, phones, cigarettes. I mean, you know, we don't know if he had anything. Um, right. You know, we even looked. Okay, well, if you grab your cigarette, we're looking for cigarette butts, just in case. We're looking for, you know, turned over leaves, you know, something that might have been. Maybe a ripped shirt, a piece of fabric, or something like that in the woods, something yeah. like that. Nothing. And nothing. I mean, nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. And I mean, where I went in, there was not even broken briars, <laughs> except for what I did. Mm. Um. I see. Okay. okay. All right. So okay. you did that on Monday and yes, yes. did the police ever bring out any dogs, any like a, what I would call more official searches, anything done like that? Yes. On Tuesday, uh, Mr. Beavers came to my house to meet the police officer to bring soft keys belongings for the dog to catch a scent. Off mm-hmm. of. Sure. Okay. Um, it was kind of rainy. Was, well, let me back up. Sorry. Monday evening, it kind of got a little rainy. Mm. Not too bad, but a little bit, you know. <laughs> so when they came out on Tuesday, they were uh, riding four wheelers, horses, wow. walking around. I mean, they were having fun. I mean, sorry. <laughs> well, at least they were out there. I mean, they might have, you know, but yeah. that's more than, that's more than a lot of people get when people go missing in the woods. So if there are people yeah. out there, you know, I think you said, and you know, ATVs and horses and everything, that's, that's considerable, yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, the dog never did pick up a trace at all. Hmm. And I mean, you know, wouldn't it, it, you would think, these were his clothes, his scent. He was in our yard. The dog was there. Didn't pick up a thing. Huh. He took him to the stop sign. He didn't pick up a thing. So okay. I'm wondering, well, where are they even his clothes? Because I know for a fact he was in my driveway. So yeah, you would assume 
But anyway, um, so they did all that searching on Tuesday. And I had placed a call to a, it's an organization called Old Dominion Search and Rescue, which were awesome. Um, they explained everything to them. They set up and we're going to come out on Wednesday after the police had searched. Um, the police actually set up a command center at at the end of the road where the stop sign's at. And they had tents in the field. Um, Old Dominion came up and they kind of fussed at the police department and that we got fussed at for going through the woods and contaminating the area, basically. Uh-huh. Because now it was, you know, me and my friends have been through there, the cops have been through there, so you are not going to be able to tell which broken limb was done two days ago. <laughs> no, no, of course not. Which, I mean, I understand that. Yeah, okay. But I get that. And I'm like, well, you know, I tried to call. Y'all didn't answer the phones. I had to do something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, They searched. They searched for the rest of the week or for another day. Yeah. We have to remember that we're going like on week. four or five days now since he disappeared. Yes. But for the rest of the week, so, and they don't find anything either. No. Um, I think, okay, the command center set up on, uh, it might have been Monday night. I mean, Tuesday night. Okay. And then, you know, I know it was there Wednesday. And then, you know, Old Dominion, they had set up out there and, and just nothing. <laughs> okay. If just did did the searchers at any point? I mean, this I know this went on for a while, maybe not quite a week or something. But if the searchers at any time, they're the experienced ones. Did they ever give you an an opinion on why no scent was found or nothing was found? Did they ever say we don't believe that Keith ever ran into these woods? Just their opinion. They weren't there that day, or was it no. something else? Did they say anything like that? No. Um, they said, they actually said that the dog may have picked up something, some kind of a scent, Mm -hmm. but did not go far into the woods. And, you know, some of these dogs, you know, you don't really know. It could have been picking up something, my smell or something. Okay. Don't know. Okay. (laughs) And the listeners should know that, uh. Let me just interject here for a second. And the listeners should know that I'm going to be doing some di- diagramming on YouTube as a video, being that I understand this area and what, what Jennifer is saying here. Uh, I will be putting up a couple maps in the group on Facebook so people can understand. I'll also be doing a YouTube video uh, to kind of ma- maybe better explain this because I know it's tough to explain this stuff on audio. And I want you to know that I'm going to do that as well, Jennifer, so people can really understand you know, the area and what you're talking about. Okay, because I think that's important in this case. Yeah. Okay, so the search was done. They really might have, the dogs might have gotten a scent, but there was no signs that uh, Keith was out there. In fact, there was no signs that any humans were out there. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, they had, you know, they had planes um, flying around. There were no... Um, you know, by this point, we're, let's see, he went missing on a Saturday night, and I know they were there Friday night, so because it was almost a week, it was wow. hot, and they're like, well, you know, if something had happened, you'd be seeing some kind of vultures or something flying around, that's what. Mm, maybe. Said. Yeah, I'm not a big, big believer in uh, that, but okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. They never did. That's fine. And they never even smelt anything. And I don't know much about the grids that they do, mm-hmm. but it's like they can go a mile out and then a couple of yards. What and why? I don't know. I don't know how it works, but they had actually gone down into the woods where he supposedly went, and then they had actually come back behind my house and then behind, across the road, mm-hmm. behind those houses. And there were some ponds. Um, you know, they're not very big ponds, but they did search the ponds, except for one. Mm-hmm. Um, Seems like to me, I guess overall what you're saying, 
Jennifer. This is a pretty complete search. I mean, if you have ATVs and horses and dogs and going all over the place, I mean, that's more than a lot of people get. I'm actually fairly impressed yeah. that, you know, you got all these people. I mean, how many people would you say in total were out there over that almost week? How many? Ooh, I don't know. It was it was a lot. Would you say 50? It was more than that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty a good search. That. Okay. That's yeah. a pretty good search. But nothing. Um, nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. Um, so and that's goes, please out, I guess. Yeah, just, that happens. You know, after last week, a uh, little over a week searching, talking to people, being in the you know the community, talking to people, getting ideas, and this and that. And it just kind of yeah, yeah. We didn't find nothing. He's not here. Okay. okay. And have there ever? Uh, this has been. It's going to be eleven years this May. Have there ever been any searches done since? Yes. Okay, let's talk about when was it, and let's talk about one of those. What did they do? Um, I can't tell you that years. Okay, that's uh, fine. That was, uh, um, maybe three months, maybe, after the initial disappearance. Um, they had gotten an anonymous tip that he was somewhere around Philpot Dam in the water. Huh. Well, how far is that from where? How far is that from where he was last seen? Mm, maybe 15 miles. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, they, they took it seriously. They had divers out and, you know, it was a couple hours. Uh, they didn't find anything. So they just took it as, well, somebody, you know, a false lead. Yeah. You don't know where this, it was an anonymous tip. You don't know where it came from. No, all I know is that they said it was a female, made an anonymous tip, but that's where his body was. Okay. So, they never found anything. Um, Any other searches? Yes, there were two other searches. Okay. Um, where were they? They focused more, like, at the other end, which they did pick up, you know, because... The way they explained to me, if you go a mile out, that's a lot of walking. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it when you're talking about it, but when you're walking out, you know, you're looking to your right, your left, and front. And there's still, he said, the way that the investigator explained to me is we could be walking a mile out and he could be two feet to the left if we not know him. That's true. So, okay. I agree. So that, um, they actually had dogs from Tennessee, one dog from Tennessee and um, dogs from North Carolina. Special, uh, special cadaver dogs. Mm -hmm. They had brought them out. They actually brought them out um, on two separate occasions. Um, I don't remember the years. They did one and then they was kind of like in the summertime and then the second time it was like two years later but they waited till like the fall time. So they did, they had the special dogs out there twice. <clears throat> once, you know, during the uh, spring months, and then once during kind of like the fall, winter months. And they, nothing. Okay. Um, during all this uh, time, during these searches, I mean, are, are you able to talk to Dennis w uh, about what happened? Um, he did come out, I guess, help search with you the next day, of course, but he, he was limited in what he could do. Um, during those following months and things, did he ever give any opinions, um, anything like that? Um, no. <clears throat> Excuse me, no. No? Um, I actually went to where he lived to pick up Keith's belongings and the vehicle that Keith had up there. And he, you know, the whole time I was packing stuff up. And he was in there cutting up with his neighbor, didn't say words, you know, and huh. you know, okay. Okay. So, what does you know, what does he say happened in the car? And and let's just put this on the record. You have not talked to Walter or his wife since that day in two thousand eight. Correct. Okay. Did you did you even know them at all or were they just two people that no. you didn't know them that at all? That was the first day I'd ever seen them. 
never met him. Oh, okay. So the only contact you had, and we have to remember their daughter was there, but the only person that you really knew in that car besides Keith was Dennis. Correct. What does he say happened? If Did he ever explain what happened between leaving your house that day and getting down to that stop sign? I mean, I know that Keith was all rambunctious and everything else, but what was the deciding factor that Keith just jumps out of the car at that point? Well, he really never gave me one. Um, he said that he was just yelling and, you know, mm -hmm. hollering down the road. And when they stopped, just jumped out of the car. Mm -hmm. And then they were arguing. He said that they actually pulled over to the road on the side. Mm -hmm. Down around the, the corner. Around the corner. Yes. Okay. Right. Where I could not see the car. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what he said. Okay. That they were yelling in the in the road and trying to talk him into getting back into the car and he just took off into the woods. Okay. And no explanation really. Okay. And then his story is also that uh, they waited there, tried to do something for like 15, 20 minutes and then they came back to your house. Remember that's what you said because they thought that, that um, Keith had maybe come back to your house, which to me makes a lot of sense, at least yeah. on the surface. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I because we you know I need to ask questions like this. Do you know if there was uh, a, a, you know a gun or any weapons in the car, anything like that, to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. And um, what have Dennis and these other people done with their lives since 2008? I guess what I'm asking you is, is there any reason to believe that maybe one of those people in the car could have done something to Keith? Did, did any of them have a grudge? I mean, you know, what's the story with Walter and his wife and, and them? You know, what is their reputations? Um, I have no actual information on them. Okay. I mean, I have their names and that they lived in Stewart, Virginia, and or Spencer, and that's all I know. <laughs> okay, and we have to remember that their daughter was in the car too. Yes, and then, you know she was she was little. I don't know how old she was, but she was she was under the age of six. Okay, little girl. So, yeah. Okay, um, so it makes total sense that he runs out. They pull over to the side of the road and they're thinking, "Man, what is going on here?" And they wait. Maybe they walk over there, try to call him a couple times, and he doesn't respond. They go back to the car and figure, well, maybe somehow he went back to Jennifer. So they do a U-turn, you know, come back to your house, and they say, you know what? You know, he jumped out of the car. We don't see him. Perfectly logical, reasonable. Yes. Okay. All right, but we have these searches done as best as people could do. Nothing was found. Did any of the neighbors in your area down there, even closer to you, ever notice anything suspicious? You know, the days after that, anything like missing or any break-ins, anything like that in your area? No, nothing at all. Okay. All right. All right, so we just kind of have to believe that he just ran off into the woods and it just wasn't found, and I think this is going to make a lot of uh, sense to people once they can maybe see a couple maps and see a video that I'm going to do uh, regarding all of this because I have to tell the listeners that when I – after we had talked the first time, I went and looked at um, – and maybe why don't you just give out – you know, the particular road and intersection, I would never expect you to give out your exact street address. But what is what is the intersection at which uh, Keith uh, ran off? What what is what are the two ro streets or roads there? I think okay, the one the one is Wingfield Orchard Drive. Um, the intersection was like eight forty five. Oh gosh, I can't remember six forty five, eight forty five. It was something. I know that. But okay. It was, uh, right there at Wingfield Orchard Road. All right. Say that Orchard Road. Say that road again, please. Wingfield Orchard Drive. Okay. Wingfield Orchard Drive. In the address, the town would be what? Um, not sure the address. Um, be Martinsville. Martinsville, Virginia. <clears throat> yes. And that is uh, just happens to be the same place where they hold a NASCAR race, right? In Martinsville, Virginia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I've been there. We talked about that before. I went to the NASCAR race yeah. 
the uh, fall NASCAR race in 1996. I was there. Okay, I sat in turn one. Okay. You, my daughter was born. Okay, all right. That's right. That would have been right around the right there. Probably around October 96. That's right. That's right around that time. Yes, that's right about that time. Okay. My favorite driver, Mark Martin, did not win. Um, okay, so that's where that is, and people are surely going to go check that out, and I'm going to be doing a little diagramming uh, for myself. Now, you did talk to me that uh, there were some people – Around that area, maybe, that weren't the greatest people that maybe Keith could have stumbled onto their land. We're not going to give out any names, but um, how likely do you believe this could be? And what do you mean by these people when you say that, you know, you've told me that there's some suspicious types. What do you mean by that? Um, well, like illegal activities. Um, I really don't want to say much more than that. Okay. And um, were they right, like right beside, did they live or right beside where Keith disappeared or would he have had to have gone, I don't know, walked a mile or something to maybe stumble onto their property or what? Probably not quite a mile. No. Okay. Okay. And did Keith, being that Keith lived at your house at one time before you kicked him out, did he know any of these people personally? Yes. He did. Yeah. Okay. Um and as do you believe the police or anybody else ever talked to these people? Have you ever had a chance to talk to them, see if they ran into Keith that day? Um, I had talked to them, yes, and I think the police had also talked to them. Um of course, you know, nobody saw him that day. Right. Um <laughs> Okay. But uh Okay. And is do you believe, just to be frank with you, is this some place that Keith would have uh, maybe gotten drugs? You talked about fentanyl before. Is this a place yeah. where he would have gotten drugs yeah. in the past? Yes. It is. Okay. Okay. So maybe that's a possibility here. Okay. Did you ever – did you end up keeping your dog? Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, I know that. I, yes. I mean, I think this is an important part because that's the reason they were over there in the first place. Is yes. that we this did dog? The dog. Um, okay. And so he passed away in uh, 2015, maybe. Wow. The dog ended up living for a while after this. Yeah. He, he died of old age. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And in talking to Dennis, is the story to this day that that um. Keith got all upset and vulgar and everything else, angry over the dog. That is still the story to this day. Yes. Okay. I don't know what to make of that. Okay. Yeah. Something like this, you know, Keith running off. Once again, you were married to him. You're still married to him. You got married to him in 1994. So you're married to him until he disappeared in 1998, 14 years. Had he ever run off like this before? Um, not like this, no. Um, I always knew where he was. Even when I didn't want to know, I knew. Okay. Um, he would go up to their house on the lake and call me and say, hey, I'm at the lake. I'm going to stay here a couple of days. All right, his parents' place. Yes, his parents' place. Okay. He would do that, and did Keith own a cell phone? Yes. Okay. And did you get it back? Did he have it on him? Does anybody know uh, about this cell phone? I never got the phone back, and I've never heard anything about the phone. It is, um, I did give him the number when he went missing, and they could not ping anything because it was turned off. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Well. All right. So they they couldn't do anything, but no records, no phone records to see if he actually called anybody after he jumped out of that car, anything like that. There were no phone records made from that phone since um, Saturday, the day he went missing. Okay. And the last calls made were directly to my phone. Okay. 
Would you ever accept the idea that um, he might have been suicidal or something like that? We know that something regarding this dog in the back of your house, we don't know, um, set him off. But could he have been suicidal? Did he ever? Do you know that Keith ever tried to hurt himself in the past? No, he had never did. Um, never, never done that, anything like I know. that. Anything's possible. Sure. And um, I hate to say it this way, but he once told me that he was too big of a coward to kill himself. Hmm. So he would never try. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So maybe we can rule that out. Maybe he just w had some manic episode, went into the woods, woods, ran, 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 and maybe the searches just didn't cover the area where he disappeared, area. maybe yeah. not, or maybe something, he did get back in that car and something went on inside the car, but it seems to me, though, that Dennison, you know, he came back to the house, he was concerned the next morning, he allegedly called the police, but let's just go over that again, the police have no records of him trying to make a report, Dennis? No, and I was told by the investigator that you know, in that situation, he was living with him, and he didn't come home. He could file a missing persons report. It did not have to be family. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sure you've had a chance to talk to Keith's parents about all of this. What, have, what did they say about it? Um, there again, that's kind of a touchy subject. Um, they knew that he was gone. Um, and I know, you know, people's like, oh, well, you don't know. How do you know? Like I told you before, that night when I looked in his eyes, I knew something mm -hmm. bad was going to happen. It was, mm -hmm. he was the love of my life. He was my best friend. We, we did bad things to each other, but we, we loved each other. And I just, I knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is, and I may be wrong. I pray I am wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I'm in my gut. He died that night. Somewhere, mm -hmm. somehow, he died that okay. night. You had what you're saying about what you're saying about him being at his your house is you'd seen him through a lot of bad times. You'd had arguments with with him and everything. But what you saw that day, that Saturday, was something you'd never seen in him before. I had never seen it. No. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, what's the last 11 years been like for you? Of course, you and Keith have two children together. How have they handled this? I mean, this is a big mystery, you know, and I'm, I'm guessing it maybe is even a maybe a, a, even a little stranger, you know, more of a mystery because you know that maybe he is out in those woods and, you know, right around, I guess, where you still live. I still live there, yes. You know. So what's how's that been for you and your kids? Well, I don't know if I can say this, but it's been pure hell. Through hell. Pure hell. Yes. Yeah. Um, it gets easier. No, it does not. It never gets easier. Um, there's not a day goes by that I do not think about him. Mm -hmm. I have actually asked for the, the records. I wanted all the records of the whole investigation. Black out what you need to do. Um, I'll do my own investigation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they talked about polygraph tests. Um, who took them? Who didn't? Um, did they take? Did Dennis or any of those people take any polygraph tests? Um, there were three. Four counting my polygraph test that were given mm -hmm. in the beginning of the search. Yes. Um, everybody passed. Me and the other three passed. Dennis refused to take a polygraph test. And hmm. according to what I was told, Walter and Lisa were never even asked. Uh, they later, I don't know, maybe five or six years later, were asked to take one, and they did, and they passed their polygraph. So Dennis is the only one that refused, still, still did not take a test, and he 
the thief now. He's dead now. Dennis is dead. Yes. All right. And how much contact did you have with Dennis after Keith disappeared? Um, just two phone calls. Two phone calls. Well, after we went and got his stuff, um, it was a year later. I called him, and I asked him if, hey, you know, just curious, have you ever heard anything? And he paused for a minute, and he said, oh, wow, it's been a year, hasn't it? And I said, yeah. And that was about the end of the conversation until um, his neighbor called me, wanted to know who I was and what said, what I was said. And he had apparently tried to commit suicide after our phone call. Wow. Yeah. Um, he eventually moved in with his sister, and I'm not sure where she lived. It was in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. The investigator, I had got news once again, I couldn't tell you what year, um, that Dennis had passed away. And, you know, I called my investigator and I told him and he looked into it. You know, we wanted to make sure, you know, it wasn't anything suspicious or if it was connected or anything. And it was ruled a suicide. So that was another dead end. <laughs> Yeah. Um, since then, there has been absolutely nothing. Nothing. Okay. Um, I will say every, I don't know, year or two, maybe three years, I'll get a letter from the sheriff's office wanting to know if Keith is still missing. <laughs> yeah. Like yes or no. Like, okay. Did you say that he was declared deceased or, or what? No. No? no. All right, so you are are you technically still married to him? I am technically still married to him. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, I do know that he probably didn't have any money. Um, this was on a Saturday, and I knew he was supposed to pick up his paycheck on Monday, and he never picked up his paycheck. Never picked up his paycheck. Okay. So, you know. So it's been tough. I'm sure your kids miss him, even though you and he were kind of on the outs. But like you said, you still love them. Obviously, yeah. you know, you still miss them. They wish they had their dad. Um, yeah. There's a lot that they don't know. Um, there's probably stuff I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, me and my oldest daughter, we kind of, you know, we talk about it. She's older. Um, my son, he doesn't really like to talk about it. Um he gets very upset, of course. Um, he has had some kind of counseling. Uh, my youngest daughter, oh, boy, we have had a ride. <laughs> um, of course, it's my fault. She blames me. She has never gotten any kind of counseling. She does not even discuss her father. <clears throat> okay. It has been very, extremely difficult. Um, my oldest daughter has two children. My youngest daughter has a set of twins. And now my son, his girlfriend, is pregnant. This will be our fifth grandchild. Wow. And he has missed so much. He's yeah. missed the, gradu- the kids graduating. He's missed the birth of four grandkids. He missed his mother's funeral. Um, wow. mm-hmm. and it's been so much that he's missed um, sometimes I'm fine and, you know you can walk walk through the store and somebody walk past you and have a smell and it's something he like his cologne yeah you know um, a, a song <laughs> I have actually got out of my car and went up to a complete stranger. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I was leaving a Walmart store and there was this guy walking, you know, kind of like in circles on his cell phone and kind of had on these pants that looked like something he used to have. And, and I kept staring at the guy and I actually pulled over and I was staring at him and I'm sure he kind of 
felt weird about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually got out of my car and I said, hey, look, um, okay, I see your face now. Um, you just look so much like my husband. I had to come and check. <laughs> huh. Yeah. It was on him. <laughs> okay, well, that's good to know. But, yeah, I, I did get up to a complete stranger and say, hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Do you have a Facebook page or something uh, set up for Keith? Um, well, he had an original, he originally had a Facebook page that mm. our daughter set up for him. Mm-hmm. Um, she doesn't remember the password. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. So, that happens. That happens to the best of us. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, through the years, we've tried to change it, and kind of everything's gotten lost. But he does have a page. Um, it's in his name, Keith Better. Um, mm-hmm. And I know he's on the Charlie Project, but I don't think that he's on Namus, which is very surprising. Which is probably I some. Heard of that. Yeah, Namus. Uh, it's a government website for missing people. Um, you probably should think about getting, uh, Keith on there, uh, because what they'll do is they'll come and take your DNA and everything else. Okay. okay. So, um, um was well, that anyway? I mean, can you send me a link to that? Or? I can do that. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Cause that's something that I would say 99% of the cases that I cover on there. The last one that wasn't on there that I can think of was Dal Phillips, who disappeared in Tennessee. He wasn't on there, but he's on there now. So I think it's very important to raise the profile of Keith's disappearance by getting him on there, because I don't think he's on there right now. Um, any last words before we complete this interview, Jennifer? Um, I would ask that if anybody had any information... Please make it anonymous. Anything would be helpful at this point. Okay. And truly appreciated. We would just like to have some type of closure. Um, some answers. Although, you know, my gut feeling, you know, but mm. there's always a chance. <laughs> right. Um, even if, you know, hey, this is what happened. This is where his remains are so that we can you know, bring him home. Sure. Anything. Okay. Well, I hope the listeners can help. I'm going to continue to help you, uh, Jennifer, behind the scenes. Uh, Anything I can do, even though that I will move on to other cases, disappearance cases, I want you to know that I'm always just a phone call away, and I'm sure that we'll be talking about Keith's uh, case until he's found. Okay. Okay. Whether he comes, you know, what? Okay, well, you know, whether he comes walking and, you know, knocks on your door one day or, you know, unfortunately, maybe his remains are found out someday, you know, in the in the fields and forests around your place. Just don't know. Yeah, I think if he showed up at my door, I would either I would probably have a heart attack and die. Right there. <laughs> okay, well, don't do that. Well, Please don't do that, yeah. Jennifer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being on this episode of Unfound, Jennifer. I really appreciate you um, doing the interview. Well, you're welcome. I look forward to talking to you later. Okay, you're welcome. And that was my interview with Jennifer Fetter, wife of Keith Fetter. I thank her for joining me and all of you on this episode. As I mentioned in the interview, I would be putting together some maps and a video for this episode. Well, those items now exist. You can find the maps on Facebook in both the group and the page and on Instagram, and you can find a short video on the Unfound YouTube channel. I think they will help you understand this case better. In addition, Jennifer has provided some of her own pictures, which I have posted in the Unfound podcast discussion group. This is a tough case to grasp. There's no dispute that Keith jumped out of the car. Jennifer is not taking Dennis's word for it. She saw Keith get out of the car and run across the street. It certainly happened. Moreover. Fifteen minutes later, Dennis and the others showed back up at Jennifer's, thinking Keith returned to the house, which makes sense to me. If, and I repeat, if, they did do something to Keith, that's not a lot of time to dispose of his body. Did they leave his remains somewhere, then go back to get them? 
I guess it's conceivable, but why go back to Jennifer's at all? Given the circumstances, I doubt Dennis and the others even knew that Jennifer saw Keith jump out in the first place. So, I think it's reasonable to assume that Dennis and the others were genuinely looking for Keith 15 or 20 minutes later. But, the extensive searches turned up nothing. And as the maps and pictures show, the foliage isn't as dense as a national park, for example. I'm usually under the belief that searches aren't wide and far enough. Maybe they underestimated how far Keith could run. I guess it's possible. But I go back to what got this all started. The dog. And I got more information from Jennifer about this deal after the interview, because I thought we skimmed over it a little too fast. The issue of Keith wanting to get the dog to give it to the Shelton's daughter was an idea that just popped up that morning. Yes, that morning. Keith called to say they were coming over. Jennifer didn't want to argue about it, even though she was against it. So they came over and we know what happened. And like Jennifer said, in retrospect, she thinks the dog would have been used for breeding. And giving it to the daughter was a cover story. So then what happened in that backyard? Is it like Mr. Shelton said, that Keith tripped over the dog and got ticked off? Well, that's possible. But if Jennifer is thinking the dog was going to be used for breeding, then maybe Mr. Shelton didn't think the dog would be good for that. That makes a lot more sense to me. And that set Keith off. How this all figures into the disappearance? I'm not sure. But if the group was lying about why they wanted the dog, then they could surely lie about other things maybe even what happened around the next corner. I'll leave the rest of the theorizing up to you. And that's the program. If you found it informative, please go to the app that you use to listen to Unfound and give this podcast a nice review. I thank you for listening. I'm Ed Denzel, and you've been listening to Unfound.